Okay, so tonight um, I want to show you, I got, I was running around Pinterest just pinning some recipes and stuff and I happened to see this pillow that I thought was just awesome and I hope you can, hope this takes you there. Um, anyway, it was a pillow and she used the pocket uh, or she made a pocket out of doilies and I thought, well, why couldn't I do that and make just a plaque that could hang all the time because I wouldn't want a pillow where I stuck tags in myself. Um, it was beautiful, but this would be hanging on the wall and I could put tags or I could put, um, you could make this for Christmas if you did Christmas paper and put your Christmas cards in there. There's lots of things that you could do with it. So anyway, I thought I would get a bit of try um, in a little different format. So today I cut out a heart and I just used some really thick, um, but sturdy cardboard and this was actually a mouse mat as you can see. I save all that kind of stuff so I can use it to cut out and um, then I'm going to use some burlap as backing and some music paper and you'll see that here music paper as my background and this is just single sheet paper that I bought at uh, I don't know Michaels or Joann's or something I've had it for a long time. And then I've got these beautiful doilies that are not listed in the store yet, um, but they will be. So I have this big one, and I'm definitely using that one. And it's kind of a, uh, it's, I wouldn't say ecru exactly, it's more of an off-white. But it went really well with this uh, burlap, this whitish burlap, off-white burlap that I had. So that, I'm going to use that. And then... There's just for some contrast, and I don't know if I'll use, you know, what I'll use, but there's this. This is a natural color of it, and it, it is an ecru, and it's square. Um, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you should be able to see that pretty good, but it's got a really pretty pattern in it. And then I have these that have little flowers, and they'll be in the store too, and the flowers are kind of 3D-ish, see? And those will be in there. And then I had these. Now these are actually white and I tea dyed them because I wanted the, the you know, more ecru color aged looking. Um, so they're just tea dyed and then I dried them and I just threw them in the dryer. So they're kind of modeled, but I like that and I like the shape and pattern on them. So those are new and those will be new in the store too. I've got a whole bunch of actual, uh, I, I ordered about 20 different doilies. So they're going to be up soon, but it takes a long time to take pictures and edit and and it's been raining, so I haven't had a lot of chance. So we'll be using some of those tonight. I don't know what all. Then I also pre-prepared with a cinnamon ornament. I'm going to bring this a little closer. I have, um, and you can see the crack in there, but that's okay because I'm going to put an image over it. And it smells heavenly. And it's just made out of um, applesauce, cloves, and cinnamon. And then I used a cookie press to make this little frame. Okay. All right, so that's the basics. Um, so let's get started. We're going to do a few different techniques, but all right, so the first thing I want to do is get this back on the on the cardboard. So I'm going to um, use my glue and I'm just I'm using tacky glue, Eileen's tacky glue. And you know how thick that stuff is. So I'm just going to squeeze it on and then brush it all over. And the reason that I'm using this one is because it dries pretty quickly, but it will stick to the fabric really well. And if you use a brush, you can get it really smooth. So I think that should be probably enough. If not, I'll add. Okay. And I'm just going to use, I, I just have a old brush that I'm forever, I mean, I've, I think I've had this for 20 years. I can get this out of the way. And I'm just going to go around and make sure it gets to the edges. I'm just going to add just a touch of water to spread it out better. There we go. That's going on nice now. Oh, 
Like I said, just making sure I get really close to the edges. That's the most important part. Isn't it just cinnamon and applesauce? Yes, um, that's one recipe, but I added cloves to mine. Um, I found a recipe that had that in there, and I thought, ooh, I love the smell of cloves. So I added the cloves into the cinnamon, and so it's got a cinnamon clove smell. So you can use, you know, different, like allspice. There was another recipe that had allspice on it. I'm not an allspice fan, so I didn't, didn't want that. But I love, 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 love cloves. Did you guys, when you were little, did you make those orange oranges where you stuck the cloves in it? Well, we did. My mom and I did all the time, and I loved that stuff. So, Okay, so now I'm just going to stick my burlap down to this, making sure that it's, you know, pushed down at the edges really good. Okay, and let me get a paper towel and wipe up my glue now. All right, and so now, and I'm not going to go right up to the edge because I haven't decided yet if I want to kind of fray it or not. So I'm just going to kind of go around it a little bit just to give me some room to work. And this heart, by the way, I just hand cut it out. I didn't... Uh, didn't use a cutting machine of any kind. I just drew it on there and cut it out. All these fancy tools are really nice to have, but I want people to know too that they're not necessary. You can do a lot of things just by being creative yourself. It just makes life easier if you have those things. So I've gotten that cut out. And so the next thing I want to do is put this paper on here. And for that, I'm actually just going to use a tape runner just because it's quick, easy, and dry. So give me a second. Whoops. It's not wanting to get started. There we go. And again, just make sure you get close to the edges when you're using whatever adhesive you decide to use. I love this Zyron thing. I won it when I um, was doing a, a Pink Peacock was doing, Jessica Shelton was doing a thing for them and I want it and I'm not a big tape runner fan but I do love 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 this one it doesn't get it doesn't get stuck like some of the other ones do except right at the beginning once in a while like the saw okay I think whoop, there we go I think that's probably enough all right so now I'm just gonna lay my paper on here and actually turn it upside down easier idea get it where I want it and I maybe should have stuck this on before I did the burlap but that's okay I can get around it all right so got that on and now I'm just going to do the same thing I'm going to cut but this time I'm going to bend it back a little bit so that I can get close to the edge and I'm not worried if it's perfect because I'll clean that up later. There, now I've got the basic cut out and now I can go in from the front and clean it up and just go along the edges and make sure that it's 
tie it up against there. See how I'm doing that? Because if your scissors is laying against the edge of the cardboard, you're going to go right up on the edge. So now we've got that on there. There you go. Yeah, good, Rhonda. Okay, um, so this is my basic part. So now I got to decide um, where I want to put my little frame. And I think I want that up there. So I'm going to, um, and I may change my mind. I may put it down here and put the, some flowers up here. I don't know, but I think I want to save the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and do some texturing um, on this part of the heart. So I have this Tim Holtz and it's just supposed to look like burlap, I guess. So, and then I have this deco art terracotta and it's just a texture paste. And I'm going to darken it a little bit because it's kind of got that clay color with a little bit of distress stain. So let me mix some of that up. I'm just going to take a little out. And I don't know how much I'll need, so I'm going to probably end up taking more. Because better to have too much than try to, try to have to match the color afterward, unless you don't care about that. Okay, and I'm going to just stamp this right next to it. And I'm going to mix it together now. And see, it gives it some color. And I may need even more of the stain part, but yeah, definitely. But you mix it in and it makes your, it changes the color of your, your uh, texture paste. Now, if this, if I could get the cap off of here, which I might be able to, let me see. Yeah, no, getting it on my hands instead, that's not a good thing. Let me get a napkin. Okay, so I'm just going to try and get a whole bunch out. The refill would probably work better for this, but I didn't have the right color refill. So, okay, I'll try and mix this in again. Yeah, this is going to take a while. I'm going to see if I can't pry that off. Let's see, I need my old scissors. There we go, getting it. Okay, that will make life easier. Okay, so I just pulled the little dauber off. I'm going to set that aside. And now I can just pour a little bit in here. There we go. Because it's probably going to take that much to get the color that I'm looking for. Much better. Yeah, that, that probably would have worked too, but I don't know why I didn't think of that. But anyway, okay, so I'm getting getting closer. I think I want a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit darker color. There we go. Okay, now we're getting there. I don't want it to be brown exactly, but I don't want the pinkish color. And maybe if I had used the white, it would have taken the color better. But this just happened to be the texture paste that I used last time, so I just had it on my desk, and so I figured, well, that'll work. Okay, so that's a little closer to what I want. It's more, more beigey. Okay, now I'm just gonna lay my thing on here, and I don't think I'm gonna want it solid, so I'm probably gonna do parts of it. So let's do like that, maybe. And a little down here. And the reason that I'm only doing it at the top is because those doilies are going to cover. So, and it is wetter when you do this, so you're not going to, you know, so it's going to be harder to get it on there. Okay, and I think that's probably good. 
And there we go. Now I got a little texture on there. Bring it up so you can see it. Okay. All right. Let me clean this mess up now so it doesn't get on everything. And I do have a tray of water next to me um, because the the uh, texture paste really sticks to your stencils and you need to get it wet or clean it in a sink or something right away. So I'm just going to leave it in this tray of water so it can be wet and will still come off later when I'm done. So let me clean this up. Now if you had another project going, the smartest thing to do would be to keep using that. Obviously don't waste, but for our purposes tonight, I'm just going to wipe it up. All right, so now I got to dry that. So I'm going to get my heat gun out. Bear with me for a minute. Okay, that feels pretty good. I'm going to stick this back on before I spill it because with my luck, I would. Dang it. Dropping everything. Whoops, that's dirty. I don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to give that just a minute to dry, and in the meantime, I'm going to work on. Oops, I dropped a little bit of that on here, but that's okay. I'm going to work on this. So, what I want to do with this frame is give it a little bit of luster and I wasn't sure which color I wanted to use so I pulled out two. One is by Inca Gold and it's a, uh, let's see, it's called Old Silver but it's really more gold. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so you can kind of see that color. It looks kind of a cross between silver and gold. And that's what I wanted was something lighter. And then this one is by Art Deco and it is, or Deco Art I mean, and it's called Champagne Ice. And I'm not sure. I think that's going to be too close to the color. So I think, well, let's try with that one first. We can always make it darker. So what I have is just a little square of felt. And I keep this because I, I don't, I don't buy Tim holds felt pads. I just make my own. And let's get that out of the way. So I'm just going to take it and rub it around on here a little bit to get a little bit on like that. So you can kind of see it. Well, it's kind of hard to see. There we go. And now I'm just going to go across the top here because I just want to highlight some of this. Because if I cover it up completely, then I'm going to lose the scent. So I don't want to do that. I just want to highlight. And this stuff is kind of dryish when you use it. So it kind of comes off your, your pad. Yeah, I love this rubbing stuff. I have uh, two, or, two or three different colors in the ink of gold, and then I just I just have this one color in the deco art. I gotta say I like the ink of gold better. So if you're gonna buy it, I would go with the ink of gold. It's smoother. The deco art is really nice, but it's very waxy and very dry. So just just an FYI, if you're gonna get it, that would be my recommendation. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going over it until it's highlighted enough that that I like it. And I'm not worried about getting it in the center part here because I'm going to put an image there. But I want my my little stand-up parts to that I pressed in so carefully when I made it to really stand out on it. There we go. Now it's starting to get some.
Okay. And I'm not worried about perfection because it's supposed to look antique -y. All right. Now, I think since I still have this out, I'm going to take this and just do a light wipe over the top of this too. So it'll just kind of blend together. Add that same sparkle. Because it is very sparkly. I know it's hard to see on here, but it, it really does add a lot of shine. And I'm not trying to hit every spot or anything like that. Just kind of going over it. Okay. And I'm going to add some just to the paper around here too, I think. And just in swipes. to give some background highlights. And this is all just play, guys. It's whatever looks right to you. And when you feel like you're done, just stop. here and I think I might be done. Okay, hopefully the camera will pick this up, but I don't know for sure and I think I'm just going to stick with that color because I kind of like it. Okay, now the one I used was the DecoArt Metallic Luster and it's the Champagne Ice. Okay. Hey, Miriam. Glad you could come. No, it's not Inca Gold. This is the Deco Art. I do have, I had the Inca Gold. I wasn't sure which color I wanted. The Deco Art is a little bit lighter, so that's the one I used. Okay, can you kind of see? I'm trying to make it, see how it's got that just shine on there now, and it's just kind of random. Okay. Yes, it lasts forever until, I mean, it does dry out eventually, but it lasts a long time as long as you keep it sealed really tight. Okay, and then here's the piece that I just did, and you can see the shine on it. Okay. No, that one wasn't, but I, like I said, I had them both out. This is the Inca Gold. It's just a little bit too close to the color of the paper, so I decided to go with the lighter one, and that was the, the deco art. Okay, now I printed out two images because I wanted to show you. This is a Christmas image, and you could make it Christmassy if you wanted to. And you would just put this in here like that, okay? Or um, I wanted a, a, more of an angel look because then I can leave it up year round. And I know it's hard to see on here with the glare of the lights, but I'll take better pictures later. Um, so this is the one I'm actually going to use. But you could do. You could do it any way you wanted. Um, and if you use different color paper, I mean, and this little Christmas image, it would be really sweet. Okay. All right. So next thing I need to do, though, is attach my doilies. So I decided I wanted to use this big one. And you can see it here. And I'm not going to exactly double it up because I want to have two layers on it. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So it's, you see here, it's like that. So it's not fully halved. As you see at the bottom here, the half would actually be here. So it's just like an inch or two down. Okay? And that's going to be my first layer. And I'm going to lay that on there. And then now I'm going to use my glue gun, which if I were doing it not on here, I would, I would use E6000 and clip it and let it dry because it would last longer. But for tonight, we're going to do this. So I'm going to just run a bead up here and press that down. Do the same on the other side. Boy, it's raining here. 
Is it raining where you are, Rebecca? And Christy, because you're down here by me. Okay, so that first layer is now stuck on there. Okay, and I'm going to put just a little at the bottom too to hold the bottom tight. Okay, <coughs> and now I'm going to do the same with the second layer, only not glue the bottom. So lay that down. Okay. All right. And I hope I got that on there. Okay, and now I can take my scissors and just cut the cut it right along the cardboard again. And yes, I know it's practically sacrilege to cut into a doily. But the good part is, is you can use the parts to make flowers or um, something else along the way. You could use this in a different, you know, these are smaller if you made a smaller heart to go with it or something. Okay, this is really hard to cut, by the way, at an angle so you guys can see. So just letting you know. I got the glue a little too close to the edge, so it's really hard. Okay, so we got, let's, I'll clean it up in a minute, but at least that's a start. Do the other side. Okay, don't throw your scraps away because you can use them. All right, now I'm just going to go in and clean this up real quick, guys. So give me just a second. Now that I've got it cleaned up, I can see where I kind of missed the glue. So I'm going to go in and glue that back down. Check the other side. Yep, same thing down at the bottom there. Okay. So there we have our first layer of pockets. Okay, so we got a pocket here and we got a pocket here. All right. Now, now is the part where you have to start making decisions. And do you want to add a third pocket at the bottom like that? Do you want a square or a triangle pocket like that? That's kind of cool looking. Um, I've got these littler ones that I tea dyed. I kind of like that. So I think I'm going to go with that one. The flower one is really pretty though. But it's not quite dark enough for my taste. So I think I'm going to go with the tea dyed. Which one do I like better? I like the darker one. Okay. So now I'm just going to make a third pocket. And this time I'm actually not going to have to do any cutting, I don't think. Because I, I don't mind having the little edges right here. So I'm going to put that on. Okay, and now I have three pockets. One, two, and three. Okay, so you could use these, like I said, if you did a Christmas background or anything, you could make, um, you could use these to put some Christmas cards in that you get, um, or you could just make it like I am and use it to put tags or notes. You know, I'll probably hang this by the door and use it to put mail and, and stuff that I want to take um, out or um, notes for Paul if I need him to remember something in the morning and I'm asleep because he leaves like at the crack of dawn and I'm, I'm not a morning person. So... Okay, so now I have the option of putting this on here or putting this up here. Um, I don't really know if I, it's kind of big to put down here because then I lose all the effect of that. I don't know. Hmm. I actually could put it over there. Yeah, I like it there. I'm going to put it there. Okay, so. 
I was thinking about putting flowers on top of that, but I think I'll put this. All right, so I'm going to use a little glue, and I'm just going to use my journey glaze because it's right here so that I can put the image in. Oh my gosh, you guys, you have no idea how good this smells. And once the smell goes away, you can just rub a little bit of oil, um, clove oil or cinnamon oil on it, and refresh it. So that's the great part about it. Okay, so I've got my image in. And I think I put a little too much glue, but that's okay. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. But there is my image in my... Oh boy, in my uh, little frame that I made. Okay. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. All right, so now that I've decided on that image and it's not staying in there, it's going to curl up. So I'm going to have to put something on there. That's not going to work. That's not big enough. Okay, there we go. All right, I set that aside with the glue on it so it'll stay in place. Okay, so now that I've decided on the image, that helps me decide which, get these doilies out of the way, which flowers I want to use. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to use the Christmas one or not, so I got some, you know, of the burgundies and stuff, but I don't think I'm going to use those. So I think I'm going to use the pinks and the peaches and the white. So I've got these out. All right, now. Hmm. Flowers are always a tricky part for me because I can never decide what I want. And actually, I think I may decide if I want to use this trim first. The other thing I got out was this trim that I sell at the shop. Um, it's the uh, off-white or ivory with the roses, ribbon roses. So let me get, find the end of that, which is always a trick because this is a brand new roll. Mm -hmm. It should have been more organized. But if I was more organized, I wouldn't be me. Okay, well, I guess I'll just... Uh, I'm never going to find the end of it. So, that's cracked. All right, I'm just going to cut into it because I can't find the end. Okay, so I got this because I was thinking that I would want to line this around the edge like that. But now that I'm seeing it, and actually I think that's got a couple of roses missing. No, maybe not. I'm not sure I like it. So I think I'll wait on that too. Like I said, flowers are the hardest part for me. I'm not, I'm better at steampunk than I am at florally stuff. So, all right, let's see how that image is coming. Okay, I think that's in there good enough. So I can put that on there now, and I'm going to lay it at an angle like that. Kind of like that. Yeah, right about there. Okay, so I'm going to hot glue this too, and again, I would use the E6000 if I... Uh, I were making this and you guys weren't here. But for speed, we're going to do this. Okay, and I think right about there should look good. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to hold that for a second. I haven't made these things in so long. I just can't get over how good it smells. Ugh, yum, yum. Okay, so there is the beginning of our little thing. All right, so now I can kind of play with the flowers and decide what I want to do. Um, I've, got, I've got more of these, but I only pulled out one of the big ones. And I'm going to take them apart because that way I can lay them where I want them. And I also have these brown ones too. So, <coughs> And these flowers are from 
uh, Craft Supplies 1, and then these are Wild Orchid Craft Letters. Okay, pulling them apart, and the leaves I'm going to leave on here like this because I can spread them out and use them in the background, so like that. Okay, so I'm going to play now and just lay them on here and see what I think. I'm thinking that I may want this little bud down here. It's kind of pretty. And I can add around it if I want to. Keep these open. And I'm sticking with the pinks, peaches, and browns because that's what's in the angel image. And she has a little gold um, crown of stars on her head. So I may incorporate some stars. We'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to get into these. They got them tied up tight. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to pull a few out. And I kind of like the idea of doing something like that at the bottom. Which I know it's hard to see, but it's really dark in here with the rain tonight. Darker than normal. Not positive yet, though, so I'm still going to play. And I've got these little peach roses and brown roses. So let's see. Undo some of these. because I'm going to want some up by the flower too. But I also want to incorporate some of this brown to bring the, the brown of the cinnamon in here. So, let's see. Like I said, I'm just playing right now to figure out what I want to do. So I'm put that there and that up here maybe. And then sprinkle in some of these. Get one of these in there too. A couple more of these maybe. I don't know, I don't want it too heavily overdone, so I'm just, just playing. Then I also have these that I can add into add dimensions. So alright, so let's see. I like this down here, so I think I'm gonna tie a ribbon around it and put it on there, but I don't have a ribbon right now. So for right now, we're just going to pretend that I do and say, oh, doesn't that look beautiful? <laughs> there we go. Like that. Okay. So it has a ribbon around it and it's going to look so pretty. Oh yeah. Christy, we're on the same light wavelength. I haven't even been looking at my screen. Okay. So I'm going to start layering like this and decide how I want this. And I don't think it's going to need a whole, whole lot because these flowers are so big. So let me, I need my other scissors in there. Let's see. And this one may end up being too big to go with the brown too. I don't know. We'll see. But let me get the backs off first. And this one you see has this bright green stuff on. So I'm just going to pull that off because it does not go at all with the rest of the greens. So just pulling that off. Okay. And this little rosebud I'm going to leave with the flower or I mean with the leaves attached because it just really adds to it. But I want them to lay the way I want them to lay, so I'm going to move them around. There we go. And I think this is pretty thick. I'm gonna need my got to get my heavy duty wire snippers out for this because it's so big, and it can be my base where I built from. So let's 
don't know. I just don't know if I like that big one. I think I might go with another little one. Okay, so we got the brown and we can go with the peaches. Get these off of here. Hmm. Let's add in some of this white. See if it's going to go. One of these bunches out. Pull one from the center. There we go. Still playing, haven't decided if I liked any of this. Maybe the big one down here. No, that big one is just too big for this project, I think. I'm just going to set it aside. <coughs> okay. And I do have other colors of these, but they're like not the colors that I want to go with. Let me try something. Oh, let's see. What did I do with it? All right. I could have sworn I kept it out just for tonight, but oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to take some fried burlap and add that to that peach and see if I can, and the white, and see if I can just give it a little more vintage touch to go with this. So I'm just direct to papering it. Just barely touching the edges. And that adds that that adds a lot of dimension. Okay. So let me do that with this one too. Okay, and I think I'm just going to do a little bit on these pinkish ones as well. And then I'm going to take a little water from these and rub them out so that they're not, they just look faded and old. Okay, yeah, I like that much better. Okay, good. So let's start with that. I'm just going to put that one in that spot because I know that's where I want my base to be. So, oh, get another glue stick. Touch there and along here. Okay, so I actually think I want it to be up and down because I don't want it to be, I'm not into symmetrical and this is at an angle. And then we'll build around there. So I think maybe that there. And I'm going to just touch this with water too. There we go. Okay, now you see if I touch it with water, it kind of spreads it. Oh man, that's hard to see when the close up. But anyway, I'll take pictures so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, add that there and that one there. And then I can add in some a curly cue for sure. I got one of those already done here that came on the stem. So let me get it off. And I know we don't want four. We gotta have five because you always want an odd number. You want three or 
five, but I think I'm going to add something down here too. And that can stick up there like that, I think. And I may end up adding more than five. I don't know yet. Okay, I kind of like that arrangement. So I think I'm going to go with that. But I didn't didn't put my burlap -y stuff on this one, so i got to do that. And this, like I said, it's just a burlap, frayed burlap distress ink. Just barely touching the edges. And I did not get this color wet. I did the, the pink and the white because I wanted it to look more faded, but I didn't with this color. Okay, so that's the arrangement I want. So let me get this big end off of here and put a little glue on it. Get that in place first. So I'm going to tuck that under this leaf and right up there. Okay. Now I'm going to put this on. And I want that kind of up at the top there. There we go. Okay, and then I want a peach, right about there, and a white, right there, and then I'm going to add the other peach kind of down near the bottom of that. So it kind of has a little bit of movement to it as well. So kind of like right about there. Okay. So that's what we got so far. I don't know if you can... Can you see that? Pretty good? I got my lights on as bright as they'll go. Okay. Um, so let me set those aside. And let me see if I want to add some of these or not. I do kind of like that, so I think I'm going to. So I'm going to add a couple of these in. And these also are from Craft Supplies 1. Get a couple of them out. Okay. Stick this up under here and let it bring up the top. And I'm doing two bunches of those right next to each other, but kind of at an angle. I'll show you here in a second. And I may even add a third, but that's what I've done to it. And I think I am going to add a third. I think I want in the middle there. So one more. Okay, so there's what we've got so far. Okay, and now I can go in and add some of these leaves that I saved from the other one. And not really super fine to that one, so I'm going to use these. All right, so. I think I'm going to want to leave kind of on top of this, but you know, I've glued that petal, so 
Didn't mean to, but it did. There, I can shove that underneath there now. Okay, like that. Yep, like in that. Okay, get that on there. And right there. I think that looks good. Okay. Now, when you place flowers, it is really personal preference of what, how you place and that kind of thing. But the one piece of advice that everyone always hears is use an odd number. And it really does make a difference. It really looks odd if it's an even number. Okay, so there's our flowers. And that's what we got on there so far. Okay. All right, now, because she's got... Um, angel wings and that little gold crown. I also brought out another new item from the store. I showed them already once, but I don't, never did get them listed in the store. Um, life just has a way of getting in the way sometimes. And so I'm going to pull some of those out. And I don't know if I'll stick them in or not, but I'm going to get one out and show you. It's got two different kinds, one with rhinestones and one with pearls. This is the pearl one. Can you see that? Okay, and I think I might want to put this like in the middle there. So it'll be like that. What? That's what I'm thinking I want to do. Just to blend the two together. Add some of that. So that's what I'm going to do. And these are a uh, heavy metal, so they do stay pretty sturdy on whatever you're putting them on. So I'm going to lay that. Okay. I don't really have anything to let it stick to down there. So I'm going to have to build up a pond at the bottom, I think, is the only way. So put that on that leaf and build that up. And then stick it down in there. There we go. Okay, so now I've got that, that star right in the center and that that's just a blend because she has a uh, a crown of gold stars on her head so it's not something you'd have to add or you can add some something totally different but I just I knew that I was thinking about that with her crown so that's that one and then the other star that I got in that like I said I haven't gotten it listed yet is <laughs> yep are these beautiful rhinestone ones and they're like a uh, silvery gold it's not a bright gold like the pearl ones are um, more of a bright gold this is more of a almost like the color of that metal deco art stuff like this kind of a color with the rhinestones in it and you can see the back it's not true silver but it's not gold either they're really really sparkly and pretty okay and I may add more of those. I don't know. I'm just playing as I'm going. All right. So I think I'm going to get some brown ribbon. Give me just a second because I didn't think of this one, this part ahead. All right, so I've got this kind of coppery brown, which is the one I pulled. I have a bunch of different browns, but I thought it would match pretty close with the cinnamon, and it does. So I'm going to tie a ribbon bow around this. And I'm also going to show you guys, if you don't know, the easiest way to make bows, turn your, your bow upside down from the way you want it. Okay, let me cut this piece off. Let's see. It's kind of even. Oh, that's bad scissors. Get my, my good fabric scissors. There we go. Okay, so turn your bow upside down from the way you want it. So it's 
So it's like this, okay? I'm going to do it upside down so that you guys can follow and you can see what I'm talking about. So if you were looking at this from your, your view, it would be upside down, and you would take your loops like this, and I'm not going to be able to do that because it's not going to work for me. Okay, so pretend it's upside down for you and you're watching this. Okay, so I'm going to make my loops like this so that my so that my tails are facing up towards my flowers. Does that make sense? Okay, and then I'm going to, I've got two rabbit ears. I'm going to cross the rabbit ears carefully and tuck it so that it stays straight. And that is the tricky part, believe me. And then pull and they will automatically fall to the bottom and you'll have a perfect bow. Okay, and then you can just adjust your bow by your pulling on your tails. But you have a perfect a bow that will lay perfectly. And it's the easiest way I've found to do it. Just do it upside down. Okay, so this uh, stem is too long, so I'm going to cut it off. I want some of it, but not all of it. Okay, and I want that to be right, the bow, right at the bottom. So I still think I've got a little Yeah, I've still got a little too much stem, and I'm going to push the bow up just a tad. Okay. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so that's how I want that. And do I want to add some of these? I don't know if I do. Let's see. Where'd they go? I have too much stuff on my desk. There we go. I need to age that light pink flower a little bit too so it'll match. Yeah, one strand in there does blend it better. So I think I will. I'm just going to put one strand though. All right, so let me get my stuff and do this lighter one. Just like I did the other one. And a tad of water. Make it fade and give it that old, dirty, um, aged look. Okay, there we go. So now because I decided this after, I'm just going to lay it behind and I can manipulate where I want it afterwards. And i got to cut it off so it's behind there. And I'm going to just glue that to the back of that bow. Because the smart thing to do would probably be to take it off the bow and um, put it behind, but I don't feel like it. It's just extra work. So I just glue it together. It'll work fine. Okay, now I can glue this on here. So I want it like right there. A little bit of glue. I'm <clears throat> I'm not putting the glue on the the white stick part because I want to be able to um, manipulate that piece. And I don't know what those are called. Sorry, I call them white sticks. But that way I can get the flower part on, and then I can tuck that behind where I want it. So I've got the flower part on. And just like that. There we go. Okay, looking good. Okay, and actually, let me see what I think. I don't know. I could put another star over the middle of that bow. That might be pretty. <clears throat> Take a look and see. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to do it. Okay. Sticking some glue in the center there. I'm going to put it right over the stem and the middle of that bow. There we go. 
Okay, now these are a little too long for me, so I'm going to cut them off. And, okay, so we're getting close. There we go. And so again, for those of you that were a little late, we used doilies and we made pockets. So I've got one pocket, two pockets, three pockets. Okay, and you could use this for, if you had a Christmas image, you could use this for uh, to stick some Christmas cards in or, you know, like I'm going to just use it to put notes and tags and things like that in. So I do like this back here, so I'm just going to go ahead and fray it. And then cut my pieces off. I decided that I like that. So so I'm just pulling the strings, as you see, and making them stand out at an angle. Um, because they'll probably have to be cut, especially when you're going at you know on the sides like this, because they're not gonna, they're not all gonna go the same direction, because it's a rounded part. Okay. Whoops. Get into that. Get to work. And I just like that added texture, which is why I'm doing it. Um, but of course, you know, you can do whatever you want with yours. Cut it close and just have it as a backing or, you know, do what I'm doing. But I like the texture. It adds a lot to me. Okay, so I'm just going all the way around, pulling out the strings, and then I'll go back in and cut them so that they're, you know, more even. And don't just look like a, you know, scarecrow or something hanging in the back. Okay, so now I've got that texturized all the way around, so I'm just going to go in and trim it up. And it's definitely not even everywhere. I mean, it's close, but it's not exactly even. And I am not worried about that one single bit. Because it just adds to that vintage -y look. So really the only last thing I need to figure out is if I want to add, oops, there's a piece that didn't get cut. Um, if I want to add some trim around the edges here, which I think I do, but I'm just not sure if I want to add. Whoops, sorry, hang on. I bumped my mouse. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure if I want to just add some ribbon. No, don't like that. I think I am going to add this. Now, getting it untangled and on could be a problem because this stuff is really delicate and it is so hard to, to untangle to sell, believe me. Get this through there. And I think it's going to be a just an airy, extra little light touch, and I do have a couple of these type of roses in this color that have fallen off of pieces that I think I can add in elsewhere to make it look like it's blended. Boy, this is a mess. Okay, guys, rather than bore you um, while I try to unwrap it, I'm going to just show you, and then I will add pictures at the end. But I am going to put this around. I'm just going to add this to the sides like this, just to help, you know, with that rough edge. So can you see that? I hope you can see that. It's kind of hard because it's white on white, but yeah. But this is the trim that I'm going to add. And that will be the last thing that I will do to it. 
So um, you can see if you had, let me find a piece of paper. Let's see. Uh, here's some tags. If you had some decorated tags, You could put these in here. Now, these are big tags, but you could put these in here. You know, I would use smaller ones. You know, or um, if you move to this stuff up, you could put like your Christmas cards. I would definitely use the smaller size. These are really big tags. These are the six and a quarter tags. So, yeah. Um, or you could use, do what I'm going to do, and that's just take some smaller note paper. Um, well, not really note paper, but like tag. The, cardstock, but um, make it into like a chalkboard type thing and I'm going to stick those in there and Paul and I can leave notes for each other. So that's my plan for mine. All right, so that's it. Other than adding the trim, that's our project. You can see the shiny um, deco art coming through in the back a little bit and it's just random on there. It's not any and around here, around here and I added some to the texture and then I got my three pockets. So what do y'all think? Thank you, Christy. Now, I am going to have a hanger. I'll, you know, I'll have to add a, a ribbon hanger. And I'll probably just use this same ribbon and maybe add some of this with it. Yep, that's definitely what I'm going to do. And that will blend that bottom piece of ribbon. So that will be my, my hanging thing. So when I get both of those things done, but i got to get the trim on first, then I will take pictures, add it to the end of the video, and you will be able to see this project completed. But that's the part I wanted you to show, is that you can use your um, doilies in different ways, and don't throw your remnants away, because you can make flowers out of these. Um, and actually, if the, you know they're bigger pieces like this one, you could make another one of these and put it on, you know? Just do it in a different manner. There's just never ever throw those scraps away. They're always good for something. Okay, so that is it, ladies. Um, actually, you know what? While I'm on it. Yeah, see here's some of those little flowers that I had that that are like that. So I could add, you know, I could add one in here behind here, or I could add them. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. I could put them on here. I mean, there's lots of options. And those are just things I'm playing with. But in the meantime, this is the project minus the trim. I will have um, final pictures at the end of the video. And the video usually takes about 24 hours to um, upload. Um, Ustream seems to be kind of slow getting them ready. Thank you, Pam. Inchies, yep, ATCs, all that stuff would be really great in there. But I really think I'm going to use the little chalkboard idea. Because I think those will be great to... Um, inchies are literally that. They're, inch, they're an inch by in, an inch. Uh, actually, I just got some as a gift from Linda. No, Melinda Harris. Let's see, where'd they go? She does hers and sells them, and they are amazing. But this is an inchy. It's an inch by inch with an image, and hers are on, um, I'm not sure what this one is on, if it's on wood, a wood tile, or, but she also does them on Mother of Pearls. And, I mean, they, she does have some beautiful, beautiful pieces, and she does have a store, too. Um, but check her out on Facebook, Melinda Harris. Aren't they gorgeous? All right, ladies, thank you all for... Oh, okay, those are on the Mother of Pearl tiles. Oh, she is here. I didn't even realize she was here. <laughs> but those are inchies, guys, and she does a fabulous job with them. All right, I appreciate you all being here tonight, and I hope um, this gave you some ideas of what you can do with your... Oh, okay. Well, that's why I had my head down working. Um, what you can do with your doilies. And like I said, I should have these doilies up this week. Um, pay attention. There is going to be a Black Friday sale and the doilies will be, you know, everything in the store will be on sale for the Black Friday sale. So just pay attention and uh, it'll be Friday through Monday. So if you're looking for something good, 
run over there then. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I will see you Tuesday. Um, Christy and I switched days because she had some things going on tonight, and she wasn't sure she could make it. So she's going to use doilies on Tuesday, too, and hers will be a, a different kind of project, I'm sure, but doilies are so versatile. Um, so I hope you guys will come on Tuesday and, and see us again and see what Christy makes. Oh, Craft Createns. Who is, I don't know who that is. But I'm glad you made the effort too. It was nice to have you here. All right. Thanks so much again, guys. And we'll see you Tuesday.